Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to show you yet another LM Erickson uh, telephone here. This one happens to be a DBH-1505 from 1951 and this telephone was made for use in the country of Venezuela. I can tell you um, why it's uh, from Venezuela. Uh, not because of markings on the bottom of the phone, but uh, the plug. It's a little busted on the plastic, but uh, yeah, first glance, it looks like it's uh, a plug from, uh, you know, a North American uh, electrical plug. But this is the type of plug they used if the telephone was not equipped with a uh, junction box like most Ericsson telephones did. Uh, it's a two-pronged plug, and you can see they're mounted... Uh, or at least the terminals are on the end here. And this plug is very remin reminiscent of the uh, plug from my Colombian telephone. And uh, instead of the two pins, it's got two, uh, two prongs here with uh, the holes in them. And the one you can see on the left side, it has a fold over there. And that's um, a reason you can tell which direction it's supposed to go in. I'm not sure if they were mounted this way or this way. I've never seen what the outlets look like for these uh, telephones. But I can tell you, uh, I search um, through and through um, Mercado Libre and also Facebook Marketplace of uh, various telephones uh, in various countries of South America. And when I saw this phone listed on eBay with this plug, I had to get it. So, uh, yeah, this one's from Venezuela. This uh, phone is pretty worn out. It might have been in front of a sunny window through its lifetime. It's got a lot of, uh, you can see the grain in the bake light here. And you can see that uh, it's cracked on the handset piece there. So let's figure out if I can find a replacement for that. And you can see the wear and tear from the uh, bake light here on the handset. It's very rough. You can also see the grain on the handset as well. And unfortunately, there's no turning back on uh, finishing the, or re uh, storing the finish on this. Because once that protective layer gets worn off the bake light, it's um, kind of like that for now, even after you clean it. So it's always going to look worn out. This dial here. They never put the Ellen Erickson logos on these uh, dial centers here. They're always blank. And it's... Uh, when you turn it, there's a lot of uh, resistance. So that one... That one uh, gear with the spring mounted on it is going to need to be loosened up a little bit in oil. So that's what's causing it to... Uh, and you can hear... Yeah, it's going to need work. And the little window for the number card is missing, so I'm going to figure out how to get a, get a new one. But the uh, DVH telephone started out with the 1001, which is uh, first came out in 1939, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. These telephones were produced all the way till 1962. That's when the Ellen Merrickson dialogue was uh, beginning to be produced uh, in 1962. So these, uh, these uh, were around for quite a while. There were the one oh one zero zero ones had like a metal dial, and their internals were a little different, but they had a similar style. And of course, these were replaced with these dials. Here's a look. You can tell I'm tired. I just woke up from a nap. Um, no damage other than there's a piece of bake light. Let's see, I can't remember if it's on this side. 
That's what's on this side. It's cracked right there. So when I clean it, I gotta be careful that the cloth or whatnot doesn't get caught on that and pull it off. Got again the Ellen Erickson logo on the handset. This phone has a curly cord. It's a good shape, just needs to be fixed up in a couple places here. And then it'll be good to go. There's the plug once again. And let me flip the phone over for you. Let's show the bottom. This is a DBH-1505T. And the only other marking here is the Ellen Merrickson logo. And this one doesn't show made in Sweden either. But it was made in Sweden. This one just doesn't happen to have that on the bottom. You see the... The feet here are going to need to be replaced because they're flat as a pancake now. I got a set of feet in a drawer somewhere that I need to pull out and uh, place on this telephone, and then it'll be good to go. I do have the cover off the telephone, so I'll show you all the inside without having to have still pictures at the end. This one has the big bells in it. Uh, I know other models had smaller sized bells. And one thing I first noticed when opening this telephone is that this dial is actually equipped with a uh, dust cover and usually they don't have them. This one does, which is pretty cool. Not that a piece of plastic is all that interesting, but usually they don't have them. I can't remember if my Brazilian version has it. Here is the wiring diagram. It's in English. So yeah, that's probably gonna come off when I wash this telephone. Fortunately, those don't survive in the water. This is a uh, paper capacitor, or uh, I'm sorry, a paper condenser. It's a paper condenser. It does show AB alpha. I'm gonna loosen this little holder up a little bit to show you, cause I, I loosened it up to see what it said as well. So let me turn this around for you. So it's a paper condenser. It's a type RKA 7510. This was made in Sweden. I think it's pronounced Sundbyberg. I might be wrong. Sundbyberg, Sundbyberg. Let me turn this around for you. Here's what the bells look like. There's the, uh, let's see. The little uh, network. You can see this phone is riddled with uh, spider webs. So it must have been in a shed or attic or something after it was removed and out of service. Oh, I do gotta show you one thing here. I think it's this bell. By the way, this is my first time removing this particular bell, too. I hadn't done it yet. No, it's not that one, but you can see that it is a pretty, pretty. 
I would say this is like a barn fresh telephone in a way. Excuse me. Ooh. There's a little, uh, guess unled wasp nest. I don't know if it was from here in the States or somewhere, uh, I don't know. Maybe it was, um, a wasp from Venezuela or some other country. We can see all kinds of, uh, dirt and grime. <laughs> I hope this one works. I really do. My Brazilian version, re the reason why I don't have a final checkout video of that one is because it doesn't work. I think it's got a bad capacitor in it because every time I test it to ring, it rings for about half a second and it shorts out. It cuts off. And I can't get the telephone to hang up all the way. So when you, you know, push it down, you could still hear static in the handset. So I don't know. I posted on the forum about it and they said it's either a leaky capacitor. I'm assuming it would have been this one. Uh, the Brazilian one has a paper capacitor. I don't know why this one says paper condenser. I don't know if that's the same thing. There's the induction, I'm assuming it's the in induction coil there. But yeah, uh, you got another neat telephone from, from uh, Venezuela. I think before they uh, produced their Elmer's dialogue versions from Freddy Um it was before they started uh, these telephones. They had these telephones before they started marketing their telephones with Conteve. And uh, around that time before, they had them uh, imported into their country for, for their use on their phone system. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is yet another project that I'm going to enjoy working on. And uh, you all saw the inside of it. So it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, get this phone working. hope it's not going to be too difficult, but more videos are to come. I do have one more phone coming in the mail. And as soon as I get it and find out what it is, I will post another video. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching.